Thank you for joining us for our Rainbow Dreaming Made by Me digital experience. I'm Laura Arnold and I'm the Programs Coordinator here at Greater Roots Museum and Archives and I'm so glad you're watching our video today. So we are going to explore something a little bit different in our collection having to do with rainbows and then we're going to jump right into the craft. So we're going to go visit Jacob over in our collections department and see what he has to show us today. Hello, my name is Jacob Freilich, a summer student at Grey Roots Museum and Archives, and this is our collections room. Today, I will be talking about this painting, one of the artifacts in our collection. This painting was made on a ceiling tile from Derby Public School in Kilsyth Township of Georgian Bluffs, Grey County. Derby Public School was first opened on September 11, 1959, and closed on June 15, 2016. While well, this ceiling tile dates back to the school's construction in 1958, the painting is from 2016, made by one of Derby Public School's students as part of a farewell to the school and as a form of art therapy for students to help lessen the blow of the school closing. The building was purchased by Barry Kresselbrink, who gave staff and students an opportunity to salvage mementos. Marlissa Nihenius, a former teacher at Derby Public School, gathered many of the painted tiles and distributed them back to the students that made them, holding on to those that were not claimed until they were given to Grey Roots in 2020. This ceiling tile is decorated with handprints, swirls, a rainbow, and the words Derby Forever. While rainbows have meant many different things in different cultures, one of the most common meanings is of a symbol of hope and positivity, making it quite appropriate to use as a send-off for a school that clearly meant so much to its students and faculty. I like this artifact as it is a good example of how people can create memorial art and artifacts in the modern day that will ensure the memory of important events, places, and people are not forgotten. That's all I have to say for today, and I hope you enjoyed. So I had a little bit of a head start with my craft today, um, just to speed things up. But all I did with my, you can create your own template as well. So with this template though, I just put it flat onto the foam core where I wanted my cloud to be. And I wanted a little bit of dangle, so then that's why it's down there. But with this, all I did was push in where the little half circles, the little lumps of the cloud met. And then I took it off, placed it, those pins in those meeting places, and then I just filled in the rest. With this one and with any kind of string art, the more pins or things you have to hold the thread, the more kind of detail you can add to your shape. So there are quite a few I forget just how many, but I think there are over 50. Um, and you can add more or add less, whatever you want to do. You can make it a completely different shape if you would like, just whatever you want to design. So because this is going to be where my rainbow dangles, I um, cut my thread and I just cut them into equal lengths. And I think they're about the length of my board, just a little bit under. And all I'm going to do is figure out where I'm going to start. So I have, I think it is, I cut six, so three groups of each color, three groups of two. So there's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. So there are, I just need 21 pins. So all I can do is I can count how many pins I needed, or I can just have it arranged however I would like. So what I will do, I'm gonna start with this yellow pin though. And honestly, there are so many different ways you can do this part, but all I did was loop it, and then I'm just going to do a double knot. And it will come loose um, if it gets pulled out, which is what happened to my original. Um, but it's going to hang, and as it adjusts um, and relaxes, it'll hang a bit more. Now, 
I did forget to mention, um, because it is foam core, you do need to worry about pins coming through. I don't know if I can get one to, this one's starting to come through. So you really need to be careful. Um, usually when I was working at home, I would use kind of like a, I have those cork hot pads. I would put that underneath while I was putting the pins in just to make sure I didn't go through and like poke myself because that would not be fun. So all I'm going to do is the entire length of adding these um, colors. Okay, so when you are fixing things, make sure you are gentle so you don't pull out your pins. And I am just going to let them settle down a little bit. Now you could do the rainbow part at the beginning or the end. I like doing it at the beginning just because I like to cover up um, the knots with the white yarn for the cloud. Um, so I did give you white yarn to create the cloud, but you're also welcome to, if you wanted to change it to like gray or anything like that, um, to make like a storm cloud or anything. Um, so you're going to have your yarn and you're going to kind of do the same thing. You're just going to tie a knot and leave a little bit of a tail, um, just so you can finish it off by tying the other end to it. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna start, and mine is a little bit more flexible just because this is the second time I'm doing this. Um, your pin should be fairly stable. So all I'm gonna do is kind of go around, and I do like to wrap it every so often. Um, sometimes I'll just loop it, but otherwise, you can just wrap it and you're just going to start filling in that cloud. It is going to take a bit of time, um, but all I'm going to do is fill in the middle first and then I'm going to finish the edge um, in a specific way and I'll show you that once we get to the end. Okay, so now that I've got the fluffy part of my cloud, I'm going to add the edge. So to start, I'm just gonna push down so that I have some room to wrap the yarn around. So all I'm gonna do is kind of wrap around and this will help hold um, the yarn in place. And it's just gonna give it a little bit more of kind of like a finished, finished edge. And I am gonna do some larger groups of nails or needles but just gonna kind of give it a nice little look to it and the best thing is you can just go back and forth if you're not happy with it you can undo any part of it um, if it's not something that is looking like you want it to look And now that I'm at the end, I'm just going to carefully work towards that starting sp spot. And then I'm just going to 
not those two together. And before I trim anything though, I am gonna just do a quick push to make sure everybody is nice and secure. And again, just watch out for those pins on the back. And now that I am happy, trim that. And then all I need to do is be patient um, and just carefully kind of comb my rainbow down just to clean it up a little bit. Now, if you have any questions at all for this craft, you are always welcome to reach out to us. Um, and oh, so if we look down here at the bottom, there's some uneven edges. Once I've let it relax a bit more and I feel like it's hanging and like I'll actually kind of just have it sit like this for like a day or so, I'll do a quick trim at the bottom just to clean up and make sure my edges are all straight. Um, that's just the way I like it, but you're welcome to do it however you would like. And then so thank you so much for joining us today for our rainbow dreaming craft. And again, I already mentioned it, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. But thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.